guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for stopping by if you're new and welcome back if you're already a subscriber happy 2021 i know that we're still in the initial stages of 2021 i'm pretty sure we all wanted to see 2020 being over it's over we've made it guys we are totally into the following year hopefully this year is a million times better than last year like fingers crossed because Oh, that was a year I'm sure we all want to forget. Um, but I actually wanted to have a discussion with you guys today. One that's very open, one that's very honest and very to the point, but also giving you guys my thoughts on the makeup industry and how it affects me as a person and its marketing tactics, which I'm sure it affects you guys as well. I mean, I'm a makeup channel. I'm sure that you've come to my page because you have an interest in makeup and you might find that you have these issues as well. And I would love to start a little community group where we can discuss our struggles with makeup and stuff like that. And it sounds really bloody taboo and stuff like that, but literally there is a struggle with makeup and makeup marketing and how it affects people. And I really want Want to address that today so before we get into the video do not forget to subscribe to my channel and make sure you have that post notification bell turned on I upload every Tuesday and Saturday at 6 a.m. Melbourne time so make sure you are ready for those I know that a lot of you guys haven't been able to see my content in the lead up to Christmas time it kind of got buried in the algorithm and stuff like that so definitely make sure that you have your notification bell turned on so you don't miss that um, I'll also have my Instagram handles on the screen for you guys go and check me out over there I am going to be trying to be a lot more active on Instagram this year I promise. So definitely make sure you are following me over there so you can keep up to date with everything. So I'll stop talking and let's just jump straight into the video. Okay, so if you guys are subscribed to my channel, you'll already know, but if you are new here, I went on a no buy last year and that was because the year before I kind of had a bit of like a blackout and that sounds so silly, but I was in a really tough time in my life and I kind of lent on makeup as my crutch per se. And I spent like two and a half thousand dollars in a week on makeup, Australian dollars. Now I know that's not as much as like US dollars, but when you convert it all around and stuff like that, that is still more money than you would have spent on the amount of products that I did in US dollars, which is like obviously what we benchmark everything against. So I kind of had a real reality check and I realized that I was constantly just buying the same products over and over and over, just in different packaging and with different finishes and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, you only need one bronzer, one highlighter, one blush, all that sort of stuff. You don't need like 30 like I do. And that is what spiked my no buy. I found a YouTuber on here called Whitney. I cannot remember her last name, but she really spoke to me in a sense of you don't need to be engaging in all this marketing. Like you're literally just buying mud in a pan. At the end of the day, if you look at it as that, as mud in a pan, like that's all you're buying. You're spending hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of dollars on mud in a pan in a different variation. Like literally, this is mud, this is mud, this is mud. Like literally, that is all it is. And that's what we put on our face. There's a lot of chemicals involved and stuff as well. And I looked at it from an environmental perspective of landfill and my contribution to landfill and how all of this that I have in my collection, all of the makeup, like that's just the makeup. Don't even get me started on hair care, on nails, on tanning, on everything else that contributes to landfill. This is just one category. It really got me thinking how... I needed to make a difference in my life and I was going to go on a no buy. Now that no buy only lasted, I think it was four months or something like that, technically on YouTube. I started it in April and then I finished it in November. So it was a lot longer than the three or four months that I kind of declared it on YouTube. So I suppose if you don't declare it, it didn't happen. But I came off my no buy in November. Um, sorry, this is a lot of background context, but I will get there. I came off my no buy in November and um, quite rapidly after that, I made a haul on YouTube. I bought some products from Sephora. I bought two eyeshadow palettes, a mascara and a highlighter. Now I was so excited to have those products. Like don't get me wrong, I was so excited, but it was like I'd taken the lid off something that had been suppressed for so long and then I just went from zero to a hundred. I was ready to drop some coin on makeup. And it wasn't a matter of like a little bit of coin. It was like, I was ready to drop something like a thousand dollars like that, just because I had given myself a little tiny bit of that feeling. And it made me feel really, really good. It just, 
it makes you feel good. Like makeup is not discriminative. Like, yes, actually, sorry, let me take a step back. Makeup can be discriminative. I do feel like there are a number of brands that don't have a big enough shade range to accommodate for the deepest of skin tones and the fairest of skin tones. It goes both ways. Um, also, I do see that a lot of them are quite yellow toned versus pink toned. Um, it's very, very interesting to see how it can be discriminative, but that is a completely different video. Let me know if you want me to do a video on that because I would love to go into that topic. That's actually a really, really interesting topic that I would love to do some research on. But when I say makeup is not discriminative, I mean on your size. So for me, I'm quite sensitive to my body image. I have a lot of body image issues. I will address that on my channel eventually. It's something that I've wanted to do because I would love to help people. But it's, it's a very touchy subject and I just don't know if I'm ready for that just yet. I will do it one day, just not yet. Now, I find that when I have a significantly stressful time in my life, I do tend to resort to an abundance of eating food. That's my stress response. And obviously through doing that, I gain weight. So when I gain weight, my clothes get tight and I don't want to purchase more clothes because I'm going to be purchasing like a bigger number than what I'm used to seeing. Um, and that really messes with me a little bit. Um, not a little bit, it actually messes with me a lot. Um, but makeup doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what size I am. I know makeup is going to make me feel good. It's going to make me look good. And like, I can buy a heap of it and none of it's like not going to fit per se. It's not gonna make my skin feel gross on my body feel like it's too big, it's taking up too much space, it's not going to make me feel bad. Like makeup makes me feel really, really good. And I feel like I did that haul and it just started the problems again. And I think what I've come to realize is that for me, I actually don't know if I can stop being on a no buy. I actually need to have a goal of trying to get my entire makeup collection into one drawer and I, I've been struggling with what I've wanted my content on this channel to be. And I think I wanna focus it more on makeup usage. Like I love makeup, don't get me wrong. I love all this sort of stuff. And if I was ever to be sent PR from a brand, I would definitely take it. Like it's something that I would be so grateful for. But at the same time, I do need to think about the financial impact that I'm causing on myself and the financial impact that it causes on you guys as well. Like I am going to recommend products that I love, that I recommend that you should purchase if you are looking for a long-term product that's going to last you into the future. Um, I love trying new products. Like um, one of the products that I purchased recently was the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. Now I'm wearing that on my eyes today and I love it. I actually think that this is going to be my wedding eyeshadow palette. I love it that much. And I've only used it literally once. I know I uploaded that whole video in December and it's currently like January when you see this video, but I'm filming it in December. So it's all kind of come within close proximity to itself. But I love this. I definitely don't think this was a waste of money because I feel like now I'm going to get my bridal look out of this. I'm thinking of doing something like what I have on now, except obviously with lashes, but that's a win. But I still have 23 other eyeshadow palettes in my collection. I didn't need that one. And I think that is the main issue that I'm trying to get across here is that I struggle with differentiating between needs and wants. I don't need more eyeshadow palettes. I don't need more bronzers. I just want more bronzers because like, for example, I've seen the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer and I want that bronzer so bad. And I've nearly bought it on a number of occasions, but I've stopped myself. I will buy it eventually, but I have to have a reason to buy it. Like it's not, fair for me to just be like, oh, I feel like buying it, so I'm going to buy it. Like, it could be a gift for a birthday present. It could be um, something to signify me meeting a milestone. Say, for example, um, I am going to do a video on my intentions for 2021 and uh, reaching 2,000 subscribers on YouTube is going to be one of my manifestation goals. And I just feel like if I meet that goal, then I can have the reward of that bronzer, for example, instead of being like, oh, I'm having a down day, I'm going to buy that bronzer. I think another issue that I faced is, um, so I do use Afterpay, like I just, 
I think it's really easy to track because I budget all of my expenses down every single time I get paid fortnightly. And if I after pay something, I can get quite a big order, but then still stay within my budgeted amount of my spending money per se. I will do a video on my channel as well this year on how I break down my spending and my budget and how I allocate things and how you can be more financially successful this year. Um, because I do feel like we all need to start thinking about other ways to generate income and being smart with our money. If, if the taught us anything, it's definitely that. So um, I will definitely do that as well. But I just, I do use Afterpay. And then when Black Friday came along, like there were so many incredible sales. Like I hadn't budgeted money or anything for it, but I just thought if I don't buy this now, I'm not going to get 20% off Sephora again. I'm not going to get... 40% off the gym attire again. Dose of Colors had something like 50% off on the Friday and it's just kind of like uh, I think I did I did end up buying from Dose of Colors on that occasion, but it was one of those things where I couldn't pass it up and it just went from one thing to another to another to another. Like it was a matter of, oh, it's on sale, I have to get it and I have to get a heap of stuff and I have to get it right now. And I could literally feel myself going down the rabbit hole so, so quickly. And I could see that I was about to spend something like a thousand dollars very, very quickly without even thinking about it. And because I've purchased two perfumes, I haven't had a perfume in a really long time because I haven't left the house. I haven't needed to have one. Um, and I've always wanted Good Girl by um, Christine Herre Christina Herrera, I believe that's who it's by. And then I also really wanted the YSL Mon Paris. They were both on sale on Catch of the Day and I buy heaps of stuff from Catch of the Day. I love it. It's kind of like my Amazon in a way. And that was like $300 like almost $300 like that. And then I was going to be like, okay, now I want to get the Pat McGrath palette from Sephora because it's 20% off. And then I want to get some stuff from Mecca. And then I want to get some stuff from Morphe. And then I want to get some stuff from Dose of Colors. Like I just was ready to drop some serious coin because it was on sale. And it wasn't really very smart of me to, to work that way because I knew that I was going to get the gratification that I had before my no buy. And I was going to have learnt nothing and I was going to end up back where I was prior to the no buy doing exactly the same thing that I did after I returned from England a couple of years ago. And I literally just thought to myself, I actually need to structure my finances so that there is literally no way that I can access more money than, sorry, that was a bird, my window is open. Um, so there's no way for me to access any more money than I actually have allocated to me for spending. So I have done that. I have worked out a way for me to control that. But I just wanted to come on here and tell you guys that marketing is so strong. Like the marketing for Black Friday, the marketing for Christmas, the marketing for Boxing Day, the marketing for New Year's, the marketing for Australia Day that's going to come up. Like the marketing is what really, really speaks to your soul and what can really affect you achieving your financial goals throughout the year. Like I said earlier on, I have been really struggling with the direction that I want to take this channel. I love makeup. I absolutely adore makeup. I like it is a very big part of who I am. I am a makeup artist. This is who I am. But I do go through struggles like this quite regularly. But I want my channel to shift a little bit in a sense that it's not going to be about product reviews. It's not going to be about the latest eyeshadow palette. It's not going to be focusing on that. It's going to be focusing on a collection that I have that I love. Um, there might be a couple of hauls sprinkled throughout there every now and then, but that would be a collective haul of things where I have rewarded myself for meeting certain milestones, like I said, and stuff like that. But I also want to really hone in on the struggles of this industry. Like this is such an incredible industry, but it can be such a toxic one as well. And Speaking from experience, being in makeup artistry, there's a lot of pressure on makeup artists because the beauty industry is so accessible now. Um, and that's what YouTube does. And that is fantastic that everybody can be excellent at makeup every single day. But I do want to dive into this. I do want to dive into brands and how they address people. I want to talk about products. I want to talk about luxury. I, I want to vlog for you guys. I really want to do what I eat in a day. Like I want to be more me on camera than I ever have been before, but I think it's important for me to be very open and honest about the struggles that I'm going through with my makeup spending issues. So my mentality for this year is going to be 
I am not necessarily on a no buy per se, but I only get to make one order a month from Sephora or any online forum, whatever that may be, Mecca or Cult Beauty or whatever. I'm only allowed to make one order and I'm not allowed to spend any more than a maximum of $200 per month. Because when you break that down, that's still $2,400 a year. And that is my maximum that has to account for repurchases and also trying new products just so I can be on top of things for you guys because I do want to be able to give you guys my honest opinions on things because that's what this is about. I want to be extremely honest, extremely upfront, but I just want to be open and honest with you guys that if you are thinking about going on a no buy, when you come off the no buy, it's actually not as easy and seamless as it may seem online because i don't think people talk about their struggles and i definitely want my channel to address those struggles like i want to be honest so i know this video was very much reveling and kind of just getting my thoughts out there and telling you what my intentions are for this year i do have a separate video coming with my intentions for 2021 coming up so definitely make sure you are subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss that but i hope you kind of got something from this channel if you have any video suggestions um, where you'd like me to do some research and give you my thoughts on certain aspects of the makeup industry, please do not hesitate to leave a comment below or shoot me a DM on Instagram and let me know because I really do want to up the scale of video uploads this year. I am uploading twice a week. Every now and then I upload three times a week, but I do want to try and do three times a week if possible in the lead up to the rest of the year, I suppose. Um, I just need to get my head around my schedule in order to do that. And um, yeah, I really enjoy uploading for you guys. So I would like to make that a thing. But thank you so much for stopping by and spending your time with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have made it to the end of the video, leave a love heart emoji in the comments below. I'd love to see who actually made it to the end of this video. That'd be like so interesting to see but do not forget to subscribe to my channel like i said i upload every tuesday and saturday 6 a.m melbourne time and i hope to see you guys in my next video but until then i hope you have a lovely day bye <laughs>